Hi, my name's Ken, and I'll be taking you through our scanner SDK for Android. This SDK launched in 2015 and has evolved quite a bit to meet market needs and market needs that we anticipate will show up in the next two years or so. The presentation is going to be broken up in a couple ways. There'll be an introduction that I'll lead with an overview of what's in the SDK, and we'll talk about a an application that's a reference a reference implementation application ideal for developers and great for demoing the device. I'll show you how to get it and walk you through it. Then Thurindu will do a deep dive on development. He'll take you through the SDK details, what's included in the SDK. He'll review some free sample source code from the scanner app, control app. And then he'll actually dev, demonstrate creating an app in the SDK using the Android using Android Studio. And it'll control the beeper, enable and disable scanning, and scan barcode data. And then we'll go into a questions and answer session. So to start this off, let's talk a little bit about what this SDK can do. And it won't all be talk like this. There'll be a lot of hands-on. But at a high level, this SDK is aimed at two types of devices, phones and tablets in general. And it works with both corded devices. So if you're familiar with our lineup, say an MP6000 or a DS8100, DS8108 series, that's corded devices, or it can work with cordless devices, say an, a CS4070 or a DS8178. And when it's cordless, it's a scanner with no cradle involved going straight to your phone or tablet via a Bluetooth connection. So when you connect your device, you've got a bunch of different control. You can control the LEDs in the beeper. You can enable and disable symbologies. So if you're on a particular page and you don't want any code 128 scanned on that page, it's very easy to do for that page. You come off that page to go to the next page, you could turn it back on. You have scanning control. So you can remotely trigger a scan, and I'll demonstrate that. So a button on your phone or your tablet or your computer could trigger a scan. Or you can enable and disable scanning also, where all scanning is turned on and off. We also have event notifications. So if your scanner is available or unavailable, that's meaning paired to the OS, if your scanner is connected or disconnected, so it's not only paired to the OS but connected to the app, you have knowledge of that. If you've scanned a barcode, you have knowledge of that. So your scanner has scanned a barcode, your phone or tablet will know that you've actually scanned a barcode. You can also do device configuration, turning on and off anything you want in the scanner. You can get asset tracking information, model number, serial number, data manufacturer, firmware version, battery statistics, and even update the firmware in your scanner. So with that, let's talk a little bit about this app that I was mentioning to you. It's the Zebra Scanner Control app. Available on the Play Store. So when you, when you Google it, here's what it comes up as. And what's really nice about this app is there's a one-minute overview. You're going to get the same for me when I present. But if you clicked on this, it would take you to YouTube and give you an overview of the app. The app is very well reviewed. It's got 4.7 stars and has a ton of capability. So let's pretend I've downloaded it. And what you're seeing right here on my desktop is a projection of my phone. So I have a S6 phone. The S8 phone has just come out. So my phone is two years old. It's not the fastest phone out there by any means anymore. But what you'll see is some very nice performance. So I'm projecting the screen from my phone. So one of the things is I launch my app, and it comes up with a pairing barcode. So if you had tried to pair a CS4070 to an Android phone just two years ago, it would have been 16 steps, 11 screen changes. It's unusable by any measure of what simple ought to be. We have a patented solution now where I can take my scanner, you just heard it scan that barcode, it will automatically pair to this application. So while we're talking, I've paired to the application and it'll launch. So now I'm into the application. So if you think of a user interaction with their phone or tablet, 16 steps, 11 screen changes, no one is a genius enough to figure that out and do it right. But with this one barcode, I can automatically get into my phone or my tablet, and it's paired to my device. Where this is really nice is, let's pretend you have a bay of tablets, 10 tablets, 
10, 10 scanners, and I'm using the DS8178 scanner. On a different day, on the next day, you're going to pick up a, a tablet and use it with a different scanner. The next day, again, you pick up another tablet, different random scanner. So how do you know you're properly paired between the two? Well, the pairing occurs in your hand by scanning that barcode off the screen of your device. And you see that it's really quick, no interaction required. So now that I have it paired, let's take a little look at what you can do. I can beep the beeper. So you have different beeper sequences you have control over. I can control the LEDs. Now I know you can't see this, but on the top of the scanner is a canopy that has LEDs on it. So right now it went green, now it went blue, now it went red, and now I've turned it off. So you have full LED control if you want to turn symbologies on and off. So for example, if I click that, UPC no, no longer scans. If I turn it back on, it does scan. I can even pull the trigger remotely. So if you watch this, I can pull the trigger, and now it's waiting for a barcode to scan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it to one. It just scanned that barcode. My finger wasn't on the trigger. I remotely triggered it from the application. I can also put it in pick list mode, which is ideal for scanning a bunch of barcodes that are very close together. The crosshairs of the scanner, whatever barcode touches that is all that scans. I can even vibrate the device. I don't know if you're able to hear that. It's sitting in my hand, but I can set a different vibration length. And you already saw that I can scan barcodes. So I'm actually scanning a barcode off of, in this case, it's my computer screen. But just as easily, it could have been my phone screen. And I have built-in barcodes to make it very easy to do. So I scanned a UPC, a code 128, a data matrix, or I can clean them all, clear them all out. And in terms of advanced capability, so let's say that I drop my phone, or I drop my scanner, I'm sorry. You just heard it, dropped on the floor, four feet. And I walk away and I can't figure out where I've got it. I can hit this button called Find Scanner. It's beeping, vibrating, and the LED is going. So all of a sudden it becomes very easy to find where your device is. I can pull up asset information. So this device is a DS8178. This is the healthcare model I'm using. There's the serial number, the firmware version I have on it. It was manufactured January 9th of this year. There's the scanner name, and it's at factory defaults. One of the other nice features that this scanner has is it has the ability to give you battery statistics. And this is new. No one in the industry does this in the scanning marketplace other than us. We have two products, the DS8100 series and the DS3600 series that do this. So let's go to the battery statistics. So this battery was manufactured in November of 16, and there's the model number of the battery and the design capacity. So brand new, Zebra Technologies ensures that you will have 2,450 milliamps in the battery. Now, we also have some other things built in. The state of health of the battery, it's 100%. It's brand new. It has zero charge cycles on it. Now, my current charge on the battery is only 32%. So I intentionally didn't charge it so you would see. It's not even close to fully charged. It's only a third charge to 32%. And there's the remaining charge capacity of the battery. But the battery is a smart battery. It can project. If it were fully charged, it would have 2,596 2,509 96 milliamp hours. So I said that it, it's design capacity. We at Zebra ensure that it will at least be 2,450 milliamp hours, brand new, but we're actually at 2,596. So this is really nice because I know what the charge of my battery is. It's 32%, what it would be if it were full if I charged it all the way. I can even tell you the present temperature of the battery. It's 69 degrees. The highest temperature it's hit is 73, and the lowest is 68. So if I, can all, if I can do all this stuff from my phone, imagine what you can do on an enterprise level remotely.
And also on the canopy of the device, the front of the device, is a LED that actually tells you if the battery is low or if it's at the proper level, which is green. So you don't have to do all this remotely to see if your charge on your scanner is good. We also have some advanced capabilities. If I want to update the firmware of the scanner, I can do that from my phone. So here I've started the process, and it's going to upgrade it. So these are the kinds of things that we provide you in this free app available on the Google Play Store. And what I find really nice is you can demonstrate this very easily to someone now because you have an app that's a reference implementation. It's done exactly the way we recommend you do it. Free source code exists for this app. And you could walk into a manager and say, let me show you this. And like what I've done is I walk into an account, I bring my phone with me, I demonstrate this. I may project my phone on a computer so that everyone in the room can see it like we're doing here, or I may just hand my phone around and give them the scanner and show them. When I'm done, I say, do you mind if I could, can I use your phone? Can I download load this app for you? And I leave the scanner with them. I walked into a number of accounts where I've downloaded this app for them, and the sales cycle continues even though I'm not there anymore. Now, my customer, let's say it's a manager, is showing his developers, look at this app, all the things you need. You just copy and paste the source code, which Thurindu is going to show you a little later. So that's the power of our Android SDK. It's going to, we're going to show you it's very easy to use, and almost the entire presentation is going to be from the user guide. So what that tells you is the user guide is pretty thorough, or we wouldn't be able to use the information from it. And not only is the user guide thorough, the SDK easy to use, there's a reference implementation application for you to source. You can get your source code from it, you can demonstrate it to people, and you can see what the ideal behavior ought to be. And with that, Thurindu, let me go ahead and transfer control over to you. Okay, Ken. So Thurindu is going to take over now and start presenting a deeper dive on the developer side. Hi all, my name is Thurindu and uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to write an application like scanner control application that uh, can uh, demonstrate it. So I'm going to use uh, Zebra Scan SDK for Android Developer Guide as my reference material and I will walk through uh, using the uh, free source code you are getting uh, with our SDK. So first of all I would like to go through an overview of this uh, Android SDK. So basically what is available with the SDK. Uh, you can find a scan control application which I can demonstrate earlier and uh, the Android SDK library file. It's a AAR file which you can uh, use in your application uh, and uh, the source code of the uh, scanner control application or the reference implementation you should use for your development. And uh, if you go to the uh, capabilities, so these are the capabilities we have. So for data we support uh, two protocols. For cordless, we support SSI or Bluetooth. For coded scans, we support USB Snappy. So as Ken mentioned, you can control plenty of things in the scanner using this uh, SDK. And uh, as well as you can do the remote management like Ken explained. And if you compare this with uh, Windows Scan SDK, uh, following two things can be noted. So we, we currently don't support uh, imaging and video and for the moment uh, two applications cannot connect into a single scanner. So so these are the components I, I mentioned you earlier available in our uh, SDK. So if you go to the uh, supported scanner list uh, we support uh, most of the all our new scan models and uh, please note that for CS470 scanner you have to use uh, firmware version rev e or above. 
and uh, what do you need to install or use SDK is uh, available in this developer guide if you go to the uh, if you go to the system recount page you can find out all the informations basically what you know it is uh, Android device that runs Android KitKat or later with Bluetooth and if you are doing any uh, USB development you should use uh, uh, Android device with USB OTG support and if you are developing any application using our SDK you have to use uh, Android Studio version 1.3 or above you have to use API level 19 or above to develop the application so Thurindu this is Dan I had a question that came in and I think now is a good time to ask um, it's a question around which devices uh, this SDK and the scanner setup uh, tool that Ken went through works on. So if someone is using a Zebra mobile computer with a scanner like the TC55, are these tools that work with that or are these only for standalone scanners? Okay. Uh, so basically you can use uh, any Android devices if you take our EMC device like TC55 It's again Android device. Yes, you can develop application using SDK and uh, You can connect any any Zebra scanner to this uh, application you are writing on top of our SDK uh, I think uh, yes, you can use our Zebra scanners as well as EMC devices Okay, but then for the, the tool that Ken reviewed with us, that is something only for Zebra scanners, not for the mobile computers, correct? So if we wanted to set up the scanner on a TC55, we would not use that tool. Yeah, for inbuilt scanner, I should say no. But if you are connecting an external scanner, yes, you should use. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next I'm going to uh, present you how to set your development environment. So first of all, you need to uh, download the SDK. You should uh, go to one of these uh, URL and uh, you can download the uh, SDK from this page. Uh, what you get is a zip package. So once you download it, uh, This is the zip package you are getting. Uh, the content of the zip package is like this. You will get the uh, uh, scanner control application, uh, APK file, and the uh, AR file, which you should include in your application, and the uh, source code of the uh, scanner control application, and uh, the Java documentation. It's a Java doc. You can uh, see the method declaration and uh, everything. So this is the content of the zip package you are getting. So let's uh, let's build the uh, sample application uh, reference implementation first. So I have installed Android Studio 2.3 in my PC. So this is how you should build the uh, reference implementation. Yes, now it's built. You can run in your device by clicking this one. So next I'm going to present you how to include the AAR, which is a library I mentioned earlier, to into, into your project. Uh, this is how you should uh, include the AAR file in your project, new, 
then go to module and uh, you should click uh, import JAR OAR and uh, then you have to browse for the AAR uh, which you download it here now after including that uh, you should uh, put the reference as a different dependency. you should uh, browse the uh, you can use this one to add the module dependency I have already added into this project so here is what you see after you include this as a uh, dependency okay uh, next I'm going to give you uh, some overview of the uh, API so basically I'm going to walk through this uh, developer guide so this is how you should uh, start writing your own application as I mentioned earlier uh, you can create your own project and include uh, AAR into that project and after that uh, what you have to do is uh, create a SDK handle object like this and uh, I have a project created for this with the simple UI and uh, this is the UI and uh, I have created all the UI components and I'm going to uh, add our SDK components into this UI and uh, this is how you should do that first of all you need to create the uh, SDK handle object and I'm going to copy and paste uh, codes segments from our developer guide to this Android Studio project and uh, then what you have to do is uh, to receive um, uh, SDK events you have to set the event delegate basically it's the class that handle your events so you have to uh, implement the uh, this this uh, interface and uh, I have already implemented that in interface once you implement that interface you will have to implement all the methods available in that interface so then you have to set the uh, set your class as the SDK delegate so this is how you should do that uh, then uh, there are few operation modes in uh, in in a Vita SDK. Uh, first one is uh, Bluetooth. Second one is uh, USB Snappy. So you can have more information uh, in our uh, Java documentation. I will show you one simple example. Now this is Java doc we have. So as I mentioned earlier, we have everything document to use for a developer. So this is the operation mode I mentioned you earlier. So there are a few uh, three operation mode, basically the no Bluetooth normal and uh, snappy. And if you don't want any communication, you can set it to that mode LCL. So I'm going to use uh, Bluetooth normal and snappy in this application so okay then what you have to do is uh, subscribe in four events basically we have uh, five event types uh, as Ken mentioned earlier we have scan appearance and disappearance events and uh, establishment connection establishment and termination events and uh, barcode events so uh, you can subscribe uh, events like this Okay. 
uh, once you subscribe for events you can connect to a scanner what you have to do is first of all you need to enable the uh, scanner detection then you will get a uh, scan appearance and disappearance uh, notifications okay now then you can uh, connect to connect to the scanner so basically in this developer guide uh, you will get uh, the source code for manual connection but uh, as Ken mentioned you can uh, connect to a scanner by scanning one single barcode so what I'm going to do is in this application I'm going to show you how to get that barcode and uh, connect connect to a device from this from that barcode so by these two functions you can get the available scanner list as well as active scanner list uh, once you connect to a scanner, connect to any available scanner, that is scanner become an active scanner. So if you are going to uh, manually connect to a scanner, what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, implement, uh, you have to call this method with the uh, scanner ID you are getting in the scanner list. So what I am going to do is uh, use the uh, pairing barcode. So, how you should get the pairing barcode is like this. And uh, in the API, we have a function called VCSSDK get pairing barcode. So, you will have to provide the uh, protocol you need to connect and the uh, configuration. Basically, I am using the current configuration of the scan and uh, Bluetooth Tradle host mode. Uh, once you get this uh, uh, barcode view object, you can put it into uh, any frame layout and uh, arrange it as you wanted. So I have already arranged that uh, content. So when I launch this application, I will see that barcode. So once I scan that barcode, the scanner will connect automatically to this application. So when it connected, I will get the connection established event so basically uh, I have to handle that event uh, in my application so this is how I handle that and uh, next I will walk through uh, some small functionality like uh, beeping scan so you can find uh, some uh, small code segments here so beep the scanner so this is how you should beep the scanner so I have a small button in my application so once I click this I want to beep my connected the scanner so this is how you should write the code for that so this is the uh, on click handle of that button so i'm going to copy and paste this code segment from uh, our developer guide to into this application This definition is not there in this application, so I will uh, type some number. It is the beep code I should use. And uh, this is the scanner ID you should use. I will use uh, the scan ID I'm getting when, when I connect it. Uh, 
then I will go through how to uh, scan barcodes and receive barcode events uh, from in, in our application. So what you have to do is you have to handle DCS event barcode event handler in your application. So this is how you should handle this event. So as you can see in this code segment, I have handled through a event handler or or a message passer. So this is a best best practice you should do use uh, while using this SDK. So I have a handler uh, to update the UI based on this based on the event I am receiving. So this is the best practice you should use in your application when handling events. So <clears throat> now I will see the scan barcode in this area in my application. So next I'm going to demonstrate to you how to enable and disable scanning uh, in your scanner. In the developer guide you will find this uh, code segment under disabling the scanner so to disable the scanner what you have to do is uh, use this, this scanner disable op code available uh, with the uh, API and I forgot to mention you earlier uh, when executing commands I have always use uh, async task this is also best practice you can directly call the api without async task but i have used async task because uh, that the api call may take some time to process in, in in this scanner so your application may be application ui may be not responsive for that moment so to avoid that uh, i have used async task and it is again a best practice uh, I'm recommending uh, this is how you should disable the scanner after disabling it you can enable the scanner by using the enable opcode okay now my application is ready so now I'm going to build the application and I'm going to run this application in a, a Samsung tab base which has API 6 this is the pairing barcode uh, and uh, I'm going to scan this pairing barcode uh, once it is scanned you have to uh, confirm that you should pair with your scanner and uh, you will see the uh, scanner model number and the scanner name here so those informations comes with uh, uh, the event that after occurred after connecting a scanner so I'm going to scan a few barcodes now so you can see the uh, content of the barcode in this text area and uh, furthermore you will get the barcode type as well as the scanner ID that barcode uh, is scanned and uh, I'm going to beep the scanner now so you can hear the beep sound 
and uh, unfortunately you can't see enabling and disabling scanners uh, once I click this I can't uh, when I trigger this scanner you you won't see the uh, illumination in the scanner so basically you can't scan barcode once you disable it and after enabling you can scan barcodes again okay uh, this is uh, basically how you should use our SDK and uh, uh, I already told you that best practices you should use uh, async task to execute any commands to scanner because it may take some time and uh, for that time being uh, your application may be not responding if you are not using async task and uh, once you receive events yeah, you can use message handlers or unknown UI thread function method uh, to update your, uh, your UI based on the event you receive. So here are the frequency asked questions whether JPOS exists in Android. Uh, currently no uh, because we don't find any um, stand industry standard service objects uh, or control objects uh, for JPOS. Once once the standard is available, we can create a service object. And uh, I thought of a second question. Uh, does this SDK support Bluetooth low energy, which is very popular now? Uh, yes, it will be supported in our next release. So that covers everything I have.